Welcome in, baseball fans. It's that time of year uh, for those teams that have advanced, getting ready for the state playoffs. We appreciate you checking in this week or around the state. As always, it is a weekly prep baseball Alabama weekly podcast discussing all things relevant with high school baseball across the state of Alabama. Um, this is a, you know, this is a, a time that, uh, that, that we and the teams all look forward to big week ahead. Um, obviously you look at the seven, a classification. Um, there's a lot of important games across the state of Alabama in seven, a, uh, you know, all area runner up and winners, I think are still to be determined. There may be one or two that have already been. I know a couple teams have already punched their ticket to the playoffs, just waiting to see if their area winner or runner up. Uh, that's what's going on in 7A this week. A lot of those will get started tomorrow on Tuesday, playing into the weekend to, final, to finalize the 7A bracket. And then, as all of you are probably aware, 1A through 6A playoffs begin this Friday. I think there are a couple of them starting Thursday. Uh, but later this week, those 1A through 6A playoffs will get started. Man, it's crunch time of year. It's fun. This is the fun time. Um, a lot going on. But before we move forward, man, I know I've got to throw this out there. A big day for the Hooters 9. Chase Elliott. I'm driving to Columbus. I'm going to go to Hooters today for lunch. <laughs> Chase Elliott in victory lane mm. in Texas yesterday. Mm. Great race. I was afraid those – I was afraid those those restarts are going to come back to haunt him, man. And then he was he was going to be out of gas. If they did one more. Yeah, that's what I heard. That's what they were saying. I, and I was afraid gas would get him. And uh, you know, and and we said this previously on a podcast. It's a big week for us. We've got big games to cover. You know, we'll be at some of those seven A games on Thursday. We'll be at state playoff games on Friday and Saturday, and then Sunday we will be headed to the world's fastest motor speedway, Talladega Super Speedway. See if Chase can go back to back this week, yeah. um, because before yesterday his last one we actually saw it at Talladega his last win. So got to um, get to see him last year. That's right, and Austin got to meet him last year. So we got sort the, of got those VIP passes. So we know uh, we I, we know how he walks from his trailer to the driver meeting. So we may be hanging out there. We, for a little we bit. smoked him out <laughs> waiting outside for about an hour. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're pumped about that, but let's get back to what we're here to discuss this week. Uh, obviously, high school baseball, as mentioned, um, you know, at any time today, you have questions or comments, please throw those in that chat box there. We'll get those out there. I do want to make sure, and we'll talk about this later. This is our normal weekly podcast, I guess you could say, where we'll uh, release our rankings as we always do. And then on this Wednesday morning at 9 a.m., uh, we've moved it up an hour because this one has a, a chance to be a pretty long one. Uh, that's the that's what you'll be wanting to hear is all of our 1A through 6A uh, predictions on who we think is going to win. It's all in fun. We'll talk about that later. But, again, there'll be two podcasts this week. Today is our weekly one. And then Wednesday will be our special round one, 1A through 6A playoff uh, predictions, looking at every one of the matchups and the, the opening round matchups in 1A through 6A. Austin, man, everything good? I know you're well. Everything is great. Um, but this will be our last podcast where we go over rank. Like next Monday, we won't hop on to do 7A rankings. This will be our sort of our last kind of weekly, um, our normal podcast. Um, but, uh, you know, on top of the playoffs being here, um, we talked about it last week. And we've done it for the last two years. Um, the We're bringing back the bracket challenge. Um, I've actually started making those brackets, those leagues. It's on a website called Office Pool Stop. It's just a, you know, you just make a, a free account and then you, uh, all the, all the, I, I'm still creating the leagues, but once I create the leagues, I'll create an article and put it out on social media. And uh, that article will have all uh, league IDs and passwords where you'll just join, you'll have seven league IDs. And you'll just join all seven leagues, obviously for all all seven classifications. The winner of the bracket challenge um, gets um, a lot of gets some some prep baseball merch. Um, the way to win is um, we've changed. I'm changing it this year for round one. You get two points to correct to to pick the winner. 
you get two points for the second round. You get four points. Sweet 16. What is it? No, no, no. First round, two points. Sweet 16, four points. Elite eight, six points. Final four, eight points. And then if you correctly pick the champion in each classification, in a classification, you get 10 points. And the, the way to win the overall bracket challenge is to accumulate the most points across each classification. So your your combined number of points across all classifications. So to win, you probably need to enter all seven classifications. Yep. So and and uh, that's why we'll uh, I'll like I said the the announcement will be coming out later today with all those league IDs and passwords and you'll be able you won't be able to make your picks yet in seven A just simply because those have, still have haven't been decided getting started um, in next week. Um, and they, they still got area play, so those still haven't been decided. But you can go ahead and join the league, but don't make your picks yet. But in, in 1A through 6A, obviously you'll be able to to uh, make your picks and, and and all that stuff. And and the deadline, I'll have to go and look at each classification. But the deadline will obviously be the at 10 a.m. on the day of whatever the first matchup in that classification starts. So if there's a game on Thursday. I think Two Way's got a game on Thursday. All picks in Two Way will be due by Thursday at 10 a.m. So um, that's just another another cool thing that we brought two years ago, just trying to bring more buzz to the playoffs. And, um, you know, it's – don't know how many people have really um, – don't really – because we haven't really done that great of a job the last two years, kind of marketing it. But um, but we think this year we can get more people. So um, yeah. that's another cool thing that we're excited about coming up. Yeah, and I want to reiterate what Austin said. If you're if you're shooting to be that champion, it's it's almost pertinent. I mean, it's pertinent that you fill out all seven classifications. So don't you know if you're a if you're a fan of a four A team, don't just fill out the four A bracket. Go one through six A this week, and then make sure you get your seven A picks next week. Um, you know, this is a little off topic here, uh, or just interjecting this here. But man, I am it, it's it's so it's so neat to go to a game and. People come up and talk about our podcast to us, man. Mm -hmm. I know this week it happened twice uh, to me, and just talking, people just talking about how much they appreciate this. So we 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 enjoy doing it. And again, man, come up and speak to us. And uh, you know, we, we we love to talk to people. I know we're busy. Yes, we are at games. We're covering, getting video, getting velocities. You know, just watching players. But please come up and introduce yourself to us. We enjoy talking with all of you. Met a super nice man at the Etowah North Jackson game this past week. Said that. Uh, he, uh, you know, loved our podcast every week, and uh, that was a, a good game I watched on Saturday. But, Austin, you want to look at some of our – pull up our slides for our summer events possibly just real quick. We'll put that up. Um, there is our summer schedule that will be coming up uh, this year. We've talked about all of these events. Um, you see there in, in bold uh, are the two big events, the Yellowhammer State Games. It's the first of its kind. And I will tell you now, um, we have um, – let me pull it up. Number? We, yep. We have uh, our catching – we have four catching spots available. Right now, first base is sold out. We have 11 middle infield spots left. We have three third base spots left. And we've got about 16 outfield spots left. So, man, I'm, I'm telling you, if you have gotten your invite to the Yellowhammer State Games and you're wanting to do that, you need to get <laughs> we're gonna shut. We're going to shut teams down. Or, we're, at or one, teams. we're at 129. Yep, 129 players. And just so you know, we're, we will be fielding 12 different teams at this event. Um, and those 12 teams will each have two catchers. They'll have – three first basemen, third basemen between the two. They'll have three middle infielders, and they will have four outfielders. That does not include POs. So that's why we're shutting it off so that we don't have six outfielders stuck on one team or whatever. So, again, I would highly recommend that you get to that. Now, if you aren't able to get to the Yellowhammer State games, there are open ID events that you will see on our website. There, Austin put the slide up. Um 
you know, you will be evaluated for the future games at all of those events. Every event that we run this summer is an evaluation for the future games. And then we've got the Rising Stars ID. Those are for 28s and 29s, uh, 28, 29 grads. And those are evaluations for the junior future games uh, this coming this this coming summer. So that's what we got working this summer. Uh, you know, uh, looking forward to that thing. Our Yellowhammer State games. Again, that's it's again. Austin said 129 players already signed up. We're going to cap it uh, at, the, at those positional needs. So positions are dwindling. So again, if you want to register, get registered or request an invite, um, and we'll we'll check it out. This is going to be a, a truly one of a kind event. We're really excited about. So you know, um, also moving forward to next year, we're in the process of putting together our four events. We mentioned last week, we'll have the kickoff classic in the Birmingham area to kick off the season. We'll have the South Alabama showdown the following week at Orange Beach, Gulf Shores and Robertsdale. And then the following week, this is a new event next year, the small town showdown. And you will see more about this this week for classes, for teams in classes 1A through 3A, we'll be having the small town showdown um, that will be February 28th and March 1st. That's a Friday, Saturday at Sand Mountain, uh, at Sand Mountain Park, beautiful Sand Mountain Park, all uh, turf fields. So we're looking forward to that. And then our um, North Alabama showdown, we'll be putting that together as well. So again, scheduling gets earlier and earlier. We've tried to be respectful of these coaches and not reach out and bother them. But we've got where now we feel like we're going to have to start getting our team set up for all of those events. So reach out if you or your team is interested in getting in one of those events. Um, but uh, that small town showdown, we've already got seven of 16 spots left. We've only got nine spots remaining. So looking forward to getting to that. Um, uh, let's see. Go ahead. I said no doubt. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just looking again and be on the lookout for more about the small town showdown next week. We'll have. Uh, an official release coming out this week on uh, on our social media platforms. Man, I think that's all the housekeeping things we've got. I think we're ready to go ahead and jump into the rankings. Um, last, last time of the year. La yep. Yeah. And, and as Austin has already said, uh, we will not be releasing 1A through 7A rankings next week. We'll be just releasing 7A. Also to the coaches. And, and we found out there's a ton of high school coaches that listen to this as well. We This is the final week for the Mizuno pitcher and player of the week and diamond notes. We do not do that during the playoffs. Okay. And while I mention that we always a little run through, uh, we're going to release our polls here. They'll be released on our social media channels tomorrow or uh, today. I'm sorry. Tomorrow on Tuesday, we will release our Mizuno pitcher of the week and Mizuno player of the week. And let me tell mm. you, this has been the easiest decision that we've ever had for both the pitcher of the week and the player of the week. You, the, you pitching, the pitching there was a second one. Yeah. yeah. But when you look at it, yeah. it doesn't get it. Yeah. yeah. yeah I agree. The second one was, was there was one that was in con contention, but it, for the, 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 offensive, the offensive, it wasn't, wasn't a question. The offensive. And, and, and I'll walk away and share this with all of you. You know, we always get recommendations for national player of the week. We're going to submit two names this week, and we hope one of them gets National Player of the Week. I don't know if it's going to or not, but so that'll be on Tuesday, and then Wednesday will be our final Diamond Notes will be released. And as I said, Wednesday at 9 a.m., be on the lookout for our Round 1 uh, podcast for predictions for 1A through 6A. And then we'll be out this weekend, as we've already mentioned, getting to some games. So that'll wrap us up with all our pre-stuff. Now let's get into what people are here for. Get into those classification rankings. You, Austin, you want to get, I'll get into one A? Okay. Um, starting it off, we've got one new team uh, inside this uh, this week's one um, A top ten, and that is uh, the team at number ten, Victory Christian, who's been in and out of the rankings. Um, they've continued to to uh, put together strong weeks. They went undefeated last week, going three and zero. They moved to sixteen and four. They come in at number 10. At number 9, sliding up one spot is Lynn going 1-1. One and one. They are their area winners. Um, and uh, slide up one spot. At number 8 is Sweetwater, who also jumps up one spot. They went 1-2 and two last week. Um, but I think they played a couple larger classification schools. Or maybe, maybe one of them was Gulf Shores, maybe? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I think that was, Mil that was Millery. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 
And I think Sweetwater beat Andalusia. Um, I, I'm not 100%, but I think. At number seven, staying put, the, the top seven stay the same this week. All went so pretty much status quo. Leroy went two and three on the week, um, but we've talked about Leroy. Um, winners of that area, they they beat Millery um, in an area series to, to win that area championship. Um, they stay put at number seven. At number six is Brantley. They went two and one on the week. At number five is Summerton Christian going 0 and one on the week. They sit at 16 and four. At number four, at number four is Hackleberg. The Panthers uh, went two and one on the week. They played Bell Green in uh, the area championship. They, I believe, they lost the first game. To I think Bell Green. So. that's lost right. The first game and then won the one game two and then um, won the deciding tiebreaker game to to clinch their area championship. Um, they they sit at twenty and six. And number three is Florala. Flora, Florala continues to put together undefeated weeks, going three and zero. Oh. They moved to 16 and one. Um, and then staying put at number two this week is Appalachian, the defending 1A state champs. They went 3 and 0 as well and pushed their record to 19 and 2, looking to defend that class 1A title. Um, and then sitting at the top is Millery, um, as they have been for the last few weeks. They went 0 and 2 on the week, but those losses were to Gulf Shores and another uh, higher classification team down in the, in the Mobile area. Um, they still sit at 23 and four and have an impressive record, but we'll be on the road in the first round of the state playoffs. Um, and we'll get into that more here on Wednesday. Looking at some teams just outside the top 10 in this week's poll, you've got Athens Bible, their area winners. They sit at 10 and 12. Bell Green, who we just mentioned, you have Hackleberg, a strong series. They sit at 11 and 11. Billingsley, um, was the lone team to fall out. They sit at 13 and seven. They lost. Um, their two area games, their area championship to Maplesville this past week. So they will be on the road in the first round. Coosa Christian is 12 and 18. Covenant Christian is 8 and 11. Maplesville, who we just talked about, won that big area series over Billingsley. They sit at 11 and 8. And uh, rounding it out is South Lamar, another area winner who will be hosting their first round playoff matchup. They sit at 16 and 9. So we'll jump right into 2A where we've got. Two new teams this week. Um, had a couple, you know, a couple teams. <clears throat> this was a this was a difficult classification to for seven through ten or so for us to we, we spent a lot of time on this. Um, but we do have two new teams this week. Coming in at number 10 is Real Town. They come in at 18 and 9. I may be wrong, but I believe this is their initial time to be ranked this year. Yep. And they are area champs and they'll be hosting first round. Correct. Again, I, yeah, I'm going to try to keep from talking about the playoffs because <laughs> we've got a an entire podcast slated for that. So I'm going to try to stay away from that. At number nine, Tuscaloosa Academy went 2-0 and last week. They stay put at number nine. They come in with a 21-10 and record. Another area champ, uh, Whitesburg Christian. They were ranked earlier in the year, have dropped out the last couple of years. They seem to be playing, <laughs> excuse me, the last couple of weeks. They seem to be playing really well right now. They went three and zero this week. Won a big time area series over Hatton. They come in at sixteen and six. Um, at number seven is Mars Hill. Mars Hill Bible, a notoriously strong two A program, went two and zero last week. They finished the season ranked at number seven with an eighteen and seven record. That's your, that's your preseason team to to win the title, isn't it? Yes, it was. That's right. So, uh, man, Mars Hill. I, mean, I had Whitesburg Christian, and uh, maybe as a sleeper. Yep, yep. So, Marshall, y'all can make you look really good by winning a lot of games in the playoffs. At number six, staying put at number six is Collinsville. They come in at four. They after a four and one record last week. They're overall twenty three and five. And I was at the Sardis and Boaz game on Friday, Big Five A series, and there were about four or five of the Collinsville players there. Talked to them, wish them well moving forward uh, in the playoffs. Uh, Ayrton, they drop a couple spot, spots. They um, lost a big-time area series to GW Long. And, you know, what's new? Ayrton and GW Long playing important games late in the season. That's just the way it is every year. Ayrton drops from two to five. They are 27, and they're, they've won 20, lost seven, and tied one. As I mentioned, they did have two losses last week, and there's the, the team they lost to, uh, GW Long. The Rebels move up from five to four. Um, they're at two and zero oh, uh, for the week, and come in at sixteen and nine. And you know what, Austin? We take pride 
that for about the last five weeks, we na- we've been able to put GW Long's record up there and we know it's right. With full confidence. <laughs> That's right. So, man, we appreciate we appreciate the input. But again, you know, it's it's playoff time. In 2A baseball in Alabama, you can bet that GW Long's going to be playing well. Are they going to win it? Hey, we don't know that. Uh, Wicksburg, they jump up from four to three, a team that's been playing, that's been real hot of late, went undefeated last week. They sit at 18 and three. Pike Liberal drops, or excuse me, Pike Liberal jumps up a spot. My apologies. They jump up to number two. That's a really talented team, a team that we've kept dibs on all year long. They did go one and no last week. They come in at 22 and five and holding on to the top spot. Uh, the Vincent Yellow Jackets, they went two and one last week. They come in with a 24 and four record. And you're probably noticing a lot of teams didn't play a lot of games last week. Well, this, the state was pretty inundated with rain uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So limited games last week. But let's take a look at some of those teams in 2A to keep an eye on. Bayshore, Bayshore Christian comes in at 12 and 11. Uh, Cottonwood. They're at 14 and 12. Donahoe, Donahoe was area runner up. They come in at 11 and 12. Fayetteville is at 13 and 14. Fife, I believe they finished runner up to Plainview. North no, Sand Mountain. North Sand Mountain. I apologize. Yeah, Plainview is in another classification. I just know they're over in, uh, in Northeast Alabama. Fife is 18 and 11. Uh, Hatton, uh, they're at 23 and 10. They missed the playoffs, a really tough area in 2A. Lindsey Lane Christian finished runner up in that area. They're at 19 and eight, dropped out this week. North Sand Mountain, the, we just mentioned North Sand Mountain area winners will be hosting first round, come in at 19 and nine. Pleasant Valley at 13 and nine. Southeastern at 11 and 13. And I believe they play Collinsville, I, I believe. And we'll talk about that later on Wednesday. And then you got Winston County rounding us out on teams to keep an eye on. They come in with a record of 12 and 10. Jumping into Class 3A this week, a little bit of movement uh, inside, uh, especially in the middle. Uh, but we've got the same ten teams on this week's in this week's edition, um, and we'll start at number ten, who is St. James. St. James uh, slides down two spots this week. Um, they went one and three on the week. They obviously um, had that big area championship against Providence Christian. They split that series. Split the first two games, and then Prattville Christian was able to to go on and win that deciding game three. Um, St. James, although they are uh, they do finish as the runner up in their area, they slide down a few spots to number ten at seventeen and ten. Jumping up a spot after making their debut last week is Op. The Bobcats went two and one on the week. At number eight is Westbrook Christian, who looks to be clicking in all cylinders at the right time. They went four and zero oh last week, pushed their record to sixteen and nine. At number seven, the team we just talked about, they've been ranked inside the top seven all year long, Prattville Christian. Um, they slide down um, two spots this week. Um, went two and one against St. James, like we talked about. Lost a game earlier in the week to Jemison. Um, so they come in at 18 and 10 and sit at number seven. Staying put this week at number six is Providence Christian. Providence Christian um, went two and oh on the week, swept Houston Academy in their area championship down in the, in the Dothan area. They pushed their record to 15 and eight. And number five is Gordo, and we talked about Gordo. Can't remember if it was last week's podcast or two podcasts ago. Yep. Gordo had had a couple of weeks in the middle part of the season where they they dropped a few games and they dropped down, I think, to nine. Um, and then we started talk started talking about a week or two ago. It looks like Gordo's starting to really put it together, and and, and they they really have. Um, they uh, they jump up to number five this week. Jump up two spots. They went two and zero on the week. Um, and, and I forget who they beat. Um, was it Fayette County? Because they've already played. Yeah. In their, uh, Winfield. I think it That's was, right. Yeah. I think it was Winfield um, to win their area championship. Um, staying put this week at number four is Piedmont. Um, the Bulldogs went 3-0 and um, and clinched their area championship as well. At number three is Thomasville. Um, they sit at three. They sit. They went 3-0 and and sit at 22-4. and And number two is Decatur Heritage, who went 5-0. and Pushed their record to 21 and 7, and then staying at the top, getting a big area sweep um, to clinch the area championship over Elkmont. Lauderdale County um, sits at 19 and 4 and will carry the number one, that number one ranking in class 3A into the playoffs, but doesn't really matter now. Everybody is 0 and 0. Um, rankings do not matter. 
Um, it's you know, all about surviving and advancing at this point. So you you just you just ruined my thunder, man, because I was about to say that when I took over the foray. Because right now it don't matter. <laughs> yeah. Well, looking at some teams just outside the top ten this week, um, you've got XL who sits at sixteen and nine. Um, they went two and two on the week. Fayette County, um, who we just talked about in Gordo's area, they finished as the runner-up in that area. They actually split. I think Fayette County won the first game against Gordo in their area series, but Gordo won the last two. Um, so they finished as the runner-up. They went 2-0 this past week and sit at 21-9. and They were in contention for that 10 spot. Um, Houston Academy, um, we just talked about them, went 1-2 and on the week, dropped, that, dropped those two games to Providence Christian. Um, they sit at 10-11. and New Brockton. Um, finished as a runner-up to Op. They sit at 17 and 11. Oakman is a new team on the outside this week. Um, they are the area winners of their area and sit at 16 and 6. Plainview also went 3 and 0 in the week and, and our area champs. They sit at 18 and 4. And Vinemont is the last team um, uh, on the outside uh, of the top 10. They sit at 17 and 5. And jump into 4A and. I'm not so sure there's a classification in the state that has more teams that could conceivably win the state state title than 4A. Man, I, I think um, I think it's a really, really deep class in 4A. Uh, there's some teams that can really do some damage. Nine of the ten teams from last week returned this week. Uh, that new team is Oak Grove. Oak Grove comes in at number 10. They sit at 18 and 10. Uh, at number nine, staying put at nine, is Deschler. Um, and I think – let me double-check. Yeah, the rest of the team stay the same because just about everybody won. Uh, Deschler, they come in at two, four, and seven. Uh, and they <coughs> play – who does Deschler play this week? Price. That's right. That's That that could be a really interesting series there. Um, Deschler stays put at number nine after going 4-0 and last week. They're at 24 and seven. Uh, at seven and eight are Etowah and North Jackson, two teams that I saw on Saturday. And I left there thinking that both of these teams could make some noise in 4A. And I, I firmly believe that. North Jackson split with Etowah. They went one and one. They come in at 24 and seven. Etowah got beat on Friday by North Jackson, but turned around and won on Saturday to clinch that area series. They went one and one. They go 17 and 12. Corner. Corner went 4-0 last week. They currently sit at 22-6. and six. They stay put at number six. At number five and number four, maybe the most intriguing, and, and again, I don't want to talk too much about playoffs, but maybe maybe one of the um, – man, we're getting blown up with coaches today, man. This is That's awesome. We're getting texts and uh, stuff. I, I, that's, so if I, if I lose my train of thought, that's why. Uh, maybe one, one of the more intriguing matchups across the state will be in 4A this week as Orange Beach, number five Orange Beach, went 6-0 and last week. They currently sit at 29-8. and They will be traveling to number four American Christian. Uh, American Christian stays put this week uh, at number four. They come in with a record of 18-5. and but as we've said all year long, that is a talented team that have played a ton of seven and six A schools. They just beat Oxford. Yeah, they just split with Oxford this past week. That is a talented team. That four-five matchup in the playoffs this week at American Christian hosting Orange Beach is going to be. That's as intriguing as there is across the state. I'll staying, be there. Staying put at number three. After going 2-0, and sweeping an area championship series is Westminster Christian. They're at 19-6. and And then the top two obviously stay the same. Bayside went 1-0 and last week. They're at 19-6. and And holding on to the top spot, uh, the Choctaws of Bibb County, they went 3-0, and currently sit at 26-2. and And I just got a text that Shelby County and Bibb County are playing tonight. So that could be an interesting matchup there. Um, so that's the top 10 in 4A. Sitting outside uh, the four, sit, some teams sitting outside the top ten. Andalusia, uh, area winners, right? Who Andalusia? Andalusia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're at thirteen and ten. Asheville is at sixteen and twelve. They're also area champs. Will be hosting the first round this week. Brooks, the Lions come in at eleven and ten, getting ready for a playoff push. Haleyville is at fourteen and nine. Hamilton at eighteen and eleven. Jacksonville at seventeen and twelve. 
Madison County, the lone team to fall out last week, they did go 0-2 against that against number three, Westminster Christian. Madison County is at 23 and 8. Munford is at 18 and 7. Priceful, we talked about them. Um, that interesting matchup with Desher this week. That's one to keep eyes on. Pri- uh, Priceful is at 20 and 10. Satsuma, area champs, come in at 19 and 7. And then Trinity Presbyterian is another team to, to keep an eye on in 4A. They come in with a record of 20 and 10. You got a comment on YouTube. Red Bay is flying yeah. under the 2A radar. Um, 14 and 6. I went and looked. They've got a pretty impressive resume. Yep. So if yep. you're looking for sleepers in your bracket challenge, Red Bay may be one to, to look for in 2A. Uh, absolutely. That's right. And uh, Mr. Moore, you give him a shout out there. We appreciate the, the kind words. Thank you there, Mr. Moore. Thanks for the the, 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 the support there. <clears throat> Jumping into Class 5A, we've got some movement in Class 5A, including a new number one, um, but a familiar face at the top spot. Um, we've got two new teams inside this week's rankings at number 10, is Headland a team that appeared throughout the first few weeks of the of the of the season? Ultimately dropped out. They've been obviously they had Wyatt, Wade Shelley, the older brother, um, and uh, I do believe Wyatt Shelley is now back healthy. So they've got both of those guys, mm-hmm. um, and and obviously winners of their area. Headland they have the upside to make a to make a run. We'll see if they're able to do that. They sit at fourteen and eleven. Another team just like Headland, who um, who was just who, who was in the rankings for the first few weeks and fell out. <clears throat> the hopeful Bulldogs, you can always seem to count on um, for playing their best baseball down the stretch when it counts. I was able to see them against Marbury in the first game this week, um, and hopefully was able to win that game. Beat a quality arm on the mound, and then went to Marbury, dropped the first game, or dropped game two of the series, and then won the deciding tiebreaker to win their area. Obviously, the defending 5A state champs, they've got, they've still got enough on back off from that roster. Um, they can make some noise once again in Class 5A. Sliding down three spots this week is Boaz. Boaz um, went 0-2 on the week. Um, those two games against Sardis, you were there on, I believe it was Friday. Yeah. Um, um, Boaz dropped their area championship to Sardis um, and will hit the road in the first round. They sit at 18-8. and Jumping up from 10 to 7 this week is Springville. Springville oh. went 22 and 9. They uh, they went 3 and 0 and sit at 22 and 9. As does Russellville, um, who moves up three spots. They also went 3 and 0 and sit at 22 and 9. Both those teams have locked up their area championship. And here's where it gets a, lo- yeah. a lot of movement inside the top five this week. At number five, sliding down three spots is Mobile Christian. Um, they went 0 and 3. They sit at 16 and 9. Two of those losses came to um, St. Paul's Episcopal in an area championship. Um, St. Paul's, obviously, ab- above them, makes a huge jump, uh, a big jump from seven to four, jumping up three spots. Um, huge week. And, and we've talked, we've seen St. Paul's may not have had, you know, been floating around 500 for most of the season. We've kept them inside, probably at that 10 spot for a lot of the season. Um, but they're a team. They're a, uh, we think that they are a dangerous team, and especially in the South, um, in Class Five A. They sit at nineteen and ten. And number three is Gulf Shores, who slides down two spots. They went um, one and two on the week. They sit at twenty four and ten. Um, and then moving up two spots this week, Sardis. Um, we've both seen Sardis. They mm-hmm. won their area championship um, against Boaz. Went two and zero. Oh. They sit at sixteen and eleven. We've both seen Sardis. Um, they, they are super physical. They are experienced. Obviously, they made the 5A state championship last year and finished as the runner-up. But uh, they, they, them, uh, I think a lot of those teams have a chance to win it, but we think Sardis has a really good chance to to make it back to Jacksonville. Um, not, not saying that he can't be beat, but good luck beating Blaze Gerhardt. Yeah. Uh, that was him up to 92. He's I saw him up to 90. Um, he's a big boost back for them heading into the playoffs. Um, and then at the top spot, regaining the top spot this week, going 3-0 against Southside Gadsden in an area championship. Alexandria um, uh, moves to 28-1 and takes over the top spot. 21-8. Yeah, and 28-1. <laughs> 28-1. They might take – Alexandria might take that, though. <laughs> yeah. 21-8. Yeah. Um, 
it's going to be tough in a three-game series. Um, at those three arms, Andrew Allen, Trip Patterson, and and Bray Good has has um, has really come on. Um, and and those three arms are going to be tough to beat in the series. And you know, looking down, I've already started looking at potential potential Elite Eight matchups, and and those. Um, that Alexandria Sardis, that's going to be a, a big, big matchup if they're both able to advance to that round. But, um, but that's, that's how the top 10 shakes out this week in class 5A heading into the playoffs. Some teams to watch just outside of the top 10 in class 5A. You've got Arab who sits at 16 and three. Demopolis is 11 and nine. Elmore County is one of those teams to drop out. Um, they sit at nine, 19 and nine. Um, they dropped their area championship to Tallahassee. Fairview is 19, 10, and 1. John Carroll Catholic is 18 and 12. Leeds is 17 and 14. Uh, Madison Academy is 19 and 13. Marbury is the other team to drop out. They sit at 20 and 8. Moody is 17 and 14. Rehoboth is 16 and 12. Shelby County is 20 and 9. Southside Gaston is 18 and 15. Tallahassee is 14 and seven and Valley is 19 and four. I do have to throw a little plug in there. Keep an eye on Shelby County in five, eight. Uh, that's I'm telling you, that's a good team. Um, coach Hamrick just texted you that. No, coach Hamrick didn't text. Did somebody texted you about Shelby County. It, no, it, but it wasn't him. It wasn't him. <laughs> it, no, but it was somebody, somebody from Bibb County. Let me know they're playing. No, I hadn't heard from coach Hamrick. So, um, but we'll look at 6A. Uh, in 6A, man, we've got the same 10 teams. There is a, a little bit of shakeup within the top 10. Uh, the the top the top six stay the same. Homewood, they drop from 7 to 10. Um, Homewood comes in at 19 and 10. They lost an area deciding series to Mountain Brook, uh, number three Mountain Brook. Uh, again, that's, you know, one of those games was a, was got away from Homewood. The other one was a was a close one, uh, but Homewood, <laughs> but Homewood also has a difficult task. This him? <laughs> Homewood has a difficult task this week headed to Hartsell. That should be an interesting series. Uh, at number nine, staying or excuse me, at number nine, moving up a spot is Spanish Ford Area Champs. I believe they beat McGill Tulin. I may be wrong there. Yeah, uh, they went three and zero. Oh. They sit at twenty one and ten. The Toros do. Uh, Sarahland, they also jump us up a spot. Uh, uh, the Spartans went two and zero, finish at twenty four and seven, or not finish, but move into this week at twenty four and seven. Northridge, they take a step forward as well. They went three and zero last week, come in with a record of sixteen and eight. Uh, and then, as I said, the top six remain the same. At number six, the Rock seven versus eight. That's another matchup in Tuscaloosa. That's right. That's right. Northridge and Saraland. Saraland will be on the road at Northridge. That's another intriguing matchup there. Um, and that's, again, in that Tuscaloosa area. Uh, at number six, as I mentioned, the Rockets of Gardendale stay put. They went 5-0 and last week. They currently sit at 22-8. and The Rams of Faith Academy also continue to win game after game. They went 3-0 and last week and come in at 21-5. and Helena, a team that we've talked about numerous times on this podcast, Again, they could easily make a move up, but the teams in front of them continue to win. Helena, the Huskies, uh, went 2-0, and come in with a record of 20-12. and Mountain Brook, uh, the Spartans went 2-0 and as well. They currently sit at 25-4. and And uh, the Yellow Jackets of Oxford, they did walk, drop one game, the second game of a doubleheader to American Christian after winning their area last week with a, uh, a, a sweep of, of Gadsden City. Oxford comes in at 25-9. and they went five and one last week, and then holding on to the top spot, uh, it, the Tigers of Hartsell. Uh, they went three and zero last week. Again, wrapping up that area championship in a and a and a series over Coleman. They come in at twenty four and seven. So that's the top ten in six A. There are numerous teams outside the top ten that can make a lot of noise. And I guess we'll lead it off with one of those teams, the Athens Golden Eagles. The arms they've got will keep them in any series they play. They're at twenty one and ten. Baldwin County is at 22 and 9. Benjamin Russell comes in at 15 and 10. Briarwood Christian, uh, they are at 14 and 10 area champions. Buckhorn won the area championship this week. They will be hosting first round. They sit at 17 and 12. Calera finished runner up in that Helena area. They come in at 14 and 11. Hillcrest Tuscaloosa. And I think we say this every year, you know. 
you know, Hillcrest stumbled along there for a little bit. I think they were like at 14 and 10 at one point. Well, if you look now, they're at 22 and 10. I know they've won at least eight straight. And again, that's what you want to be doing uh, when the playoffs come around. Hueytown, a really hard-nosed team, went 4-0 last week. They're at 20 and 15. And who do they play? That's that's an intriguing matchup. Stanhope Elmore. That's right. Stanhope Elmore and Hueytown this week. Uh, that's another uh, series to keep an eye on. McAdory, a team that we saw two weeks ago, really athletic team. Uh, keep an eye on them. They finish at 14 and 10. Muscle Shoals wrapped up the runner-up spot in that Hartzell area. They they are 14 and 10 right now, and it's a team that we saw. And you said the first thing you said was they're solid, and they are. They again finished runner-up in that Hartzell area. Pell City. When we were doing these rankings last night, we we both talked about, it, and you're the one that brought it up. If there's a team, and I mentioned Athens already, but I think you lean towards Pell City being a team outside the top 10 to keep eyes on. Uh, that's a team that can make some noise as well. Uh, Pike Road, they also finish up with the 21-9 and nine record. And then the rounding us out, um, um, area champions, Wetumpka comes in at 20-13, and 13, getting ready to host a first-round playoff series this coming weekend. So that'll wrap us up in 6A. Um, jumping into 7A, same number one this week, but we've got two new teams inside the top 10. At number 10, a team making their making their way back into the top 10 in Class 7A is James Clemens. The Jets clinch their area playoff. Um, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> You'll well, be, you won't be there. I won't be there Thursday. I'm, I, I'm, there's a very good chance that I may be there Saturday. I know it's at James Clemens, but I'm not going to be able to be there Thursday. I could be there Saturday, but uh, but Chad, if if I can't, can will that deal still work for the playoffs if y'all are hosting later in the week? So appreciate that. That was some good chicken last year. Like I mentioned, James Clemens comes in at number ten, clinched their area championship with the. A sweep series over Florence and Austin to start area play, and that sets up a huge areas areas championship with Bob Jones. Um, James Clemens pushed uh, went three and zero on the week and sit at twenty seven and eight. Auburn, another team like James Clemens, who comes makes their way back into the rankings this week um, after a huge, huge um, Thursday. I think it was Thursday over. Um, no, it was Friday. Huge Friday over at. at at home, they swept. Um, they they dropped game one against Central Phoenix City at Central Phoenix City, and then um, games two and three at Auburn, they were able to win. Uh, able to win that those two games. Um, there you go. <laughs> Mr. Pearl, I will. Uh, uh, Mr. Davenport, I, I agree with you. Uh, uh, hopefully, I can be there Saturday, Mr. Pearl. Um, maybe I can do it the next week. Put it in Auburn. a go box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But Auburn, a huge, huge series win, I guess you could say. That really, those those first two games are the only ones that go to your area record. But the, that that game three um, only comes into play when you're used when you're if you um, come into a tiebreaker with with that team. But you know these teams, they want to win. They want to win two out of three, and, and Auburn was able to do that at home. Um, so that, that sets up a huge area series this week against Opelika. Um, and we were talking last night, if Auburn sweeps Opelika, that puts Auburn at four and two. And then, um, not many people are talking about Smith station, but I've seen Smith station. Smith station is, is solid. They are, they're, they're good. Um, if they, and they play central this week, if both of, if Auburn sweeps to go to four and two, Central Phoenix City and Smith Station both split. That puts all three of those teams at four and two. Mm. So, a um, lot, lot left to be determined um, in that in that area here here in the Auburn area. Um, at number eight is Baker, who slides down one spot. Um, they went three and one on the week. They they took game one against Mary G. Montgomery, dropped the second game, and then won the tiebreaker game. Um, uh, and then at number seven, you have Spain Park, um, who slides down uh, two spots. Um, but th- these the, the seven 
the seven through three spots was about as tough as it's been for us to decipher for the whole the whole season. Yeah, because you you look at it. All right, we'll we'll go ahead. Number three is Thompson, obviously. Four Hewitt Trussell, five Spain Park, six Oak Mountain. Oh no! Oh no! Yes. No! No! no. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at three yeah. Thompson, four Hewitt, five Hoover, six Oak Mountain, seven Spain Park. Three through seven, those are all teams in that Birmingham area. So those teams don't know – they don't know if, if their season is going to be alive next week. But you look at Hoover, obviously, big week for Hoover. They went 2-0. and They swept Vestavia Hills. They've clinched their – clinched, I believe, they a spot. Clinched, a spot. clinched their spot in the playoffs. Um, so you have to reward them, and, and, and they've, they've uh, played their best baseball down the stretch here. You look at Oak Mountain. Oak Mountain is in the driver's seat in that other area. They sit there at three and one, but they've got to play Hewitt Trussell this week, who we think is is one of the top teams in the state. Hewitt Trussell, like Hewitt Trustville, is two and two in that area, but they've got to play Oak Mountain, who's who's um, who we've talked about all season long, having that good pitching staff. And, and Hewitt, Trust- Hewitt Trustful has split. With Spain Park and Chelsea, so there's your Hewitt Trustful Spain Park connection. Yeah, yep. Um, Thompson Thanks. is two and two. Um, we just did at number three. I mean, we, could we move Oak Mountain up? To, I mean, there was could we move Oak Mountain up to number three? That's probably too big of a jump. Um, you, I mean, can you move Hewitt Trustful up? I mean, don't I mean they're too that they, they haven't. I mean, they're still fighting for their lives going into the last week. They've split both their area series. Um, so we just kind of kept it kept it the same for this week. Now, next week, if if like Thompson, if if those if there's some drama that happens, there's gonna be a lot of movement in seven. Some drama. I like it. Some drama. Yeah. But you know and, what? And we'll we'll be there, we'll be there front row on Thursday. A hundred percent. And let me tell you. We have talked about this and talked about this and talked about this. Those two 7A areas in Birmingham. And we go into the last week of the season, and there is so much that is still being played for. As we mentioned, Hoover is the only team that has wrapped up a playoff spot. Everyone else, I mean, listen, we don't know what's going to happen this week, but we've had Thompson one, two, or three all year long. And if Thompson doesn't play well this week, they're not going to make the playoffs. The same can be said for Hewitt Trustful. The same can be said for Oak Mountain. The same can be said for Spain Park. Those that was that was really, really difficult getting those teams in the rank that we did. And we just said, hey, let's let it play out one more week, basically. Running running through the standings real quick for that area five. Hoover's four and oh, Thompson is two and two. Vesavia Hills is one and three, and Tuscaloosa County is one and three. In area six, that other area, Oak Mountain is three and one. Hewitt Trussell and Spain Park are both two and two, and Chelsea is one and three. So they all still are alive. Yeah, I know. There's, I mean, there, mathematically, yeah. there hasn't a team that's been eliminated yet. So uh, yeah, and and it's eight, and we've said this, and it's eight great teams. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I don't like to use the word great, but it's eight. Really, really good teams. So, you want to finish us up in seven yeah. eights because we need to talk about Bob Jones and Central a little bit too. You know, yeah. Uh, Bob Jones, um, they went four and oh, four and oh on the week. They beat, um, swept Florence and beat Athens, beat Athens, um, to push their record to 32 and six. Um, there was talk. I mean, do you, do you switch Central Phoenix City and Bob Jones? We ultimately kind of Came uh, we, you talk about Central? They're thirty-one and three. They went three and two on the week. They won one game against Auburn, lost games two and three, and then swept Dothan on Saturday. Um, so they went three and two on the week. We we're, t- I mean, do you swap Central Phoenix City and Bob Jones? We ultimately kind of led to letting this week play out. See how Central does against. Uh, Smith Station, see how Bob Jones does against um, James Clemens. Um, and then going into next week, we'll have a, a little bit more of a of a clear view, we hope, because we keep saying it and we don't we we still don't know. So um, and just, 
And just a reminder, we will have one final 7A ranking next week. All right. Yeah. And again, that'll be the only top 10. We will not do power 25 next week. The only thing we will have is one, a through a new one, a through 10 at one through 10 in seven, a yes. Look at the teams just outside the top 10 this week. Um, one of the teams to drop out was Chelsea, Chelsea. Um, they're at one and three in air in their area play. They're 19 and 11, got a big area series. Probably need, they need to sweep this week. Um, they sit at 19 and 11 enterprise is 19 and 10. Fairhope is 22 and 11. Grissom is 20 and 13. Uh, Huntsville is 17 and 14. And both of those teams are getting ready for a big area series this week. Big rivalry. Um, Mary G. Montgomery is 20 and 9. Uh, Smith Station, another team we've talked about, they're 19 and 14. Sparkman is 25 and 8. Tuscaloosa County is 16 and 14. And the other team to drop out this week um, was Vestavia Hills. They sit at 14 um, and 15. Oh, my. Miguel Mitchell. Yeah. Is he not at Florida anymore? He transferred somewhere? I don't know. Yeah. Um, going into – we'll go ahead and look at the, the Power 25 polls. Um, you've got two new teams. Um, the two teams dropping out last week, Gulf Shores and Mobile Christian, dropped out last week. Um, at number 25, one of those new teams is Bayside Academy at 19-6. and six. Homewood is night Homewood comes in at number 24 at 19 and 10. At 23 is Spanish Ford at 21 and 10. At number 22 is Bibb County at 26 and 2. At number 21 is Sarah Lynn at 24 and 7. At number 20 is Mary G. Montgomery at 20 and 9. At number 19 is Northridge at 16 and 8. At number 18 is Chelsea at 19 and 11. At number 17 is Vestavia Hills at 14 and 15. At number 16 is James Clemens at 27 and 8. At number 15 is Auburn at 21 and 9. At number 14 is Baker at 24 and 4. At number 13 is Gardendale at 22 and 8. At number 12 is Faith Academy at 21 and 5. At number 11 is Spain Park at 22 and 11. At number 10 is Oak Mountain at 21 and 10. At number 9 is Hoover at 22 and 13. At number eight is Helena at 20 and 12. And number seven is Mountain Brook at 25 and 4. And number six is Oxford at 25 and 9. And number five is Hewitt Trussell at 24 and 7. And number four is Thompson at 24 and 9. And number three is Hartzell at 24 and 7. And then at number two is Bob Jones at 32 and 6. And then staying at the top this week is number one, Central Phoenix City. The Red Devils sit at 31 and 3. So there you have it. Our final weekly 1A through 7A polls, again, with the exception of 7A. We will release that next week one more time. That is our final uh, prep baseball power 25 poll of the year. Uh, man, now rankings don't – well, you know, rankings really don't mean anything, but now they really don't mean anything. Everything will be taken care of on the field. Um, it's a time that we look forward to. I know all of the baseball fans out there look forward to it as well. It's, it's a lot different than playing in state playoffs than it is playing on – February the 28th when it's 42 degrees outside. It's um, fun fun for us too to cover game cover state playoff games and not those February games where it's 40 degrees. But the only problem I have is I just have a fear of missing something, man. Yeah, I know. Missing a home run, missing a triple, you know, uh but, but that's going to happen, you know. But yeah, we we look forward to being out and as I mentioned, we will be out this week especially the latter half of the week at those big 7A matchups and into the state playoffs. But again, just a reminder, all right? The fun begins Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. So you can check back in with us as we will have our uh, 1A through 6A predictions um, and, and see what you think about those. And, you know, I will preface it by saying we legitimately don't care who wins anything. We just, you know, putting it out there uh, who we think is going to win. And we're probably going to be wrong more than we're right. But uh, we'll be filling out a bracket challenge so you can you can match your wits against ours as well. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun to follow. Um, again, we appreciate all of the comments yeah. today. That, that bracket challenge is coming out later today. So be on the lookout for that. You can fill out your brackets, uh, in one, eight through six, a later today. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah. So get those filled out again. We appreciate all of the comments and questions today. And, uh, we look forward to it again, again, one more time, Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. Round one playoff podcast where our predictions are being made. Until then, we'll see you later. Thanks for joining us.